Hello, this is Mike Jai one and you guys are going to be real excited. Um, I finally started the construction of my new Sterling engine. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use these cans, as I said before in one of the other videos. Um, I, I'm going to use these cans as the displacer. Um, these are 12 ounce, 355 milliliter um, cola light beer cans. They're aluminum. Um, they fit perfectly inside of these um, whipped cream cans. Um, I think these are the same size as um, other aerosol cans like um, spray paint cans and things like that um, but they fit really good inside those so I'm going to use this as the displacer chamber and then I think I might use these um, I think they're like pineapple cans not really sure what size they are um, for the water jacket I haven't decided on that that's still far ways off um, so yeah I've already cut this off here um, but I'm going to cut it shorter I just um, so yeah, I'm going to remove that lip there, and I'm going to solder them together. So, um, never tried soldering on an engine, um, but I think it's going to work real good because solder sticks, as long as you're using steel cans, they, the solder will stick very well. Um, because I tried soldering these together, it took me about a minute to do this. Um, it's, I did a pretty j bad job on it because I didn't try. Um, the cans were a little bent too, so. But, I mean, it's really strong, and it heats up pretty much instantly, so. Um, that should work really good, soldering it. Um, and then if I want to ever take it apart, I would just leave a little thing sticking out like that and I could peel it off and then re-solder it. Because the um, solder, when you peel it off, when you kind of peel it off, it's not real strong. But it's strong other ways, so I can kind of peel that apart. So that should work real good. Um, so I've already started um, on the displacer chamber. Um, this is the... Or I mean displacer. Um, so I've cleaned up this can, drilled a hole in the little the rivet that holds the pop tab on for the um, displacer rod, and then also in the top there too. So, so yeah, and then this is going to be the cap that goes on the bottom. So I've also scratched the middle there, and that's going to also glue onto the end of the rod there. So I'm going to glue that on with JB Weld. I guess I'll do that right now. Okay, so I've got it all glued together. Um, I just have to wait for it to dry. Um, so that work, should work pretty good. Um, um, let's see. So yeah, I mix my JB Weld on this little just L piece of metal. Works really good. Um, and I usually mix it with a matchstick. Um, but so yeah, now I have to wait for this to dry. Um, and I guess I might be able to start working on this while I'm waiting. Um, so I need to cut a piece of this tubing which fits perfectly over top of here um, and I've used this on my other Sterling engines this piece um, it's a little bit bent up here that's why it doesn't slide perfectly whoops that's not good didn't want to do that um, so yeah I have to cut this um, and figure out what that's going to look like alright so now I'm going to give you the dimensions in case you want to replicate this so here's a sketch I drew up um, but it's not very easy to tell what it is so um so I'll just I wrote them on the cans too so these whipped cream cans are 6.7 centimeters in diameter um and the beer cans are um 6.1 centimeters in diameter um so the beer cans are 13.2 centimeters tall so and then I cut a um 2.6 centimeter the end of off of 2.6 centimeters of the end off, off the end of one of the cans and that's what I glued on the bottom so that the total displacer can is now 13.9 centimeters tall um, so that's the displacer so that that 13.9 is from right there down to right here um, and then so these whipped cream cans are so this one is let's see 13.2 centimeters from this edge here down to right there or wait wait a minute no they're 14 centimeters from that edge down to the edge down here the beer cans when they're inside they only come down to right that that line right there which is 0.8 centimeters from the bottom because of the curve doesn't match the curve of this but it's pretty close um, and then so that means that the Wait a minute, let me think. Um, 
Yeah, so that's how close it can get to the bottom. Um, and then the the top part of it is um, 7.5 centimeters from that edge to that edge. And then the can can only get up to 0 0.8, so 6.8 centimeters. And then the total from this top hip here down to the bottom is 22.3 centimeters. And then if you subtract um, 0 0.8 on both ends and the um, how tall this is 3.9 then you'll get the um, how much of a how big the cam needs to be so the cam on mine is going to be um, s I believe it's let me see here 6.9 centimeters from here to there so I'm gonna actually take this shaft out of the middle here and actually glue it on the outside so I have a little bit more um, up and down motion. So, see, I'm going to have to pull that out of there. And it'll be, it might need ground off a little bit because I just kind of estimated it, but it should be pretty close. Um, so, yeah, I think that should work. So, the next step, because this is dry now, I need to um, glue or solder the, um, the small tube. Um, that's going to be my um, gland or my push rod slide right there and then I will need to drill another hole for the um, to connect to the piston and I'll need to solder a pipe on there and then I'll need to solder them together basically I think that's about it so yeah okay so I've got my little tube cut here and a hole drilled in my can so now I need to solder that on, and then I'm going to also solder this brass washer thing on top to give it some strength, and then this bushing, so that'll give it some strength, I hope, hopefully enough, um, so that's going to be soldered on there, so I guess I'll solder that on. Okay, so I got the rest of this ports um, soldered on, I had to use the blowtorch because the soldering iron wasn't quite enough, um, but it's on there pretty good now. Um, so, looks pretty good, and it still moves, so that's good. I didn't solder the, um, the displacer in place, so that's good. So, I guess the next step would be probably to drill a hole, um, somewhere around here, I think, um, for the, um, to connect the piston, um, and then solder a small pipe on there. Um, and then after that, I think we can solder it together, so that should be good. Um, so yeah, get to doing that. Okay, so now I've got the um, the two the pipe that will go to the um, piston um, soldered on. Uh, looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's glued on there, and I have or um, soldered on there. I mean, and that looks pretty good. So I think it should be time to um, put it together now. So going to need to solder the um, two cans together, so that goes up and down real nice. And then we'll need to solder this together, right here. So we'll need to clean that joint up a little bit better. And here's my strip of metal that I'm going to solder on there. Um, I might try first, just to see if it'll work, soldering around here um, without the strip of metal, but I don't know. It might. It might not be very strong, though. But I could try it because that might be easier um, where it won't take as long and it won't use as much solder so I might try that um, but yep looks pretty good so yeah okay so I've partly or I've tacked the um, solder the um, strip on a little bit in a few spots there um, and I've gotten the top part in the right spot where the it, the displacer doesn't hit anything it spins really easy in there oh, it's hitting a little bit must have gotten moved a little bit but you have to adjust it so that it's right in the right place I tried just soldering along there but there were some little spots where the, it was a little bit too wide and the solder wouldn't um, stay ac um, connected across so so I've just got you can see the strip is soldered on there with a little lip there so there's enough room for this to uh, be soldered on so I guess I'll just solder that on and I'm going to leave this um, 
this right here so that if I ever want to take it apart, I just take some pliers, grab onto that, and pull it off. Um, so, kind of rip the solder apart, so that should work pretty good. Alright, so I guess I'll solder that, and yeah. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you how easy it is to solder this joint. So, right here I have a little tack there, um, just to hold it together, and it seems to be in the right place. I just tacked it a few spots. It rubs in one spot a little tiny bit, but it's not very much, so it's perfect. Um, that was the best I could get it. So I've got my solder here. Um, this is just electronic solder. Um, I don't know if it really matters, but... Once you heat it up, it just kind of goes right into the crack. solder in there because it was a little wide. That looks pretty good. Yeah, but this is like so fast. Um, it's like as fast as hot glue gun. It's way stronger. Now, I wouldn't do this on the hot end. Um, this is going to be, the water jacket's going to be over top of this, so there's, um, no possible way that this solder is going to ever melt um, because unless I run out, of, unless there's no water around it, but I'll be careful not to run it like that. And if I do, I won't get it very hot because the solder will easily melt and then it will come all apart. So that would be really bad. So, yes, I do have to remember to not do that. But I mean, JP Weld is nice, but it just takes a lot of time, and it's awfully hard to get apart because it's pretty strong. So, whereas this solder, I should be able to just peel that strip off if I ever want to take the engine apart. So, Alright, well, that's this side done here, so now I've just got to do the bottom there, and it should be good. And I should be able to solder the water jacket on, and I'm not sure if I'm going to solder it on or not. I think I might, because it looks awfully nice when you solder it, and it's awfully easy, so. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to solder the water jacket on, so I guess I'll do that. Alright, so this is going to be the water jacket. Um, so this is, I cut the bottom here. Um, of this can with the exacto knife and then the bottom here or the other end I cut off right there and here's the lid I took it off with the kind of can opener that leaves the lip on there um, and I also drilled two holes in it for the um, displacer rod and the piston tube there so this goes on here and that's gonna be soldered on there at least if I can solder it and then this will go over top of the engine. Let's see if I can do it this way. With one hand. Okay, so it's going to go down there. And then this will go over top. And like that. And that's the water jacket. Still got to solder or put some, drill some holes for the water in and out tubes. And that should be good. So, so yeah, that's what it's going to look like. Um, and this can is about 7.8 centimeters in diameter, and I think I cut it to about 10 points, about 11 centimeters long, so, um, yep, um, so I guess the next part is to solder that up. Okay, so I've got the water inlet and outlet pipes soldered on there. Um, I've got them soldered on, so maybe the water will travel in a spiral, and, um, but I don't know. Um, and also I've got them so that they're very flush in there um, so that I can drain all the water out because this is steel so it's going to rust 
Um, I also soldered the lid on too, so. Okay, so I finished soldering the, um, the, uh, water jacket, and I built my frame. I used part of the frame from the other one, and what do you know, it works. Still needs some adjusting. Um, the, um, displacer piston goes down a little bit too far and hits it and wastes all of its power when it does that. Um, hits the bottom, so it's not very powerful, but it spins, so it works. So, I think it's going to be pretty powerful, so. So yeah, it's just kind of put together. I really wanted to test it out, so. Um, not very professionally done right now. I don't even have water in the water jacket. It's not too hot yet, so that's good. I'm just heating it from the bottom, so it should be okay. But when I get heat all the way up to sides, up to about here, it should be a lot better. Because, I mean, it's hot there, it's not burning hot. So I could get a lot hotter. And the heat from the flame isn't enough to keep it going either. Um, but it seems to be working really good. Um, I did try... Well, at first I did try the... Um, the frame from my other engine, um, but the, these wooden parts here were only about this long, and it bent this a little bit, so I had to bend that back as best as I could, and I built longer, um, longer frame for it. And I glued two pieces of copper connectors together to make a little bit longer um, piston, and it works pretty good, I guess. So. I need to get some water in it now. So yeah, it just ran out of heat. So that's why it stopped. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It actually works. Um, as you can see, I did have to carve out the um, the um, flywheel there a little bit. Um, I still need to do it a little bit more so it doesn't hit. Um, so I'm going to need to carve it down maybe half a millimeter more um, into the... Um, into the VCR drum, and I, as you can see, I just have it um, hose clamped on there, which seems to work pretty good actually. And I might just keep leaving like that, um, but yeah, that seems to be working pretty good. Um, and also, th this little connector here hits there, so I'm going to need to put a longer rod on here. Um, I might also build a new um, piston because this one is starting to get a little bit sloppy, so it doesn't have as good of a feel, but it seems to work pretty good. They're not even being adjusted yet. See, I'm pretty excited. This looks pretty good. Um, 